Hey guys, what's going on? A lot of people have been asking, how in the world do you play World of Warcraft with an Xbox controller, or a PlayStation controller, or a Steam controller, or anything like that? I'm going to answer that question today. I could sit and I could type at you all day long explaining how to do it, and kind of sort of get my point across, but the best way to show you guys how to do it is just make a video on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. The first thing we got to do is we got to download WoW Mapper. WoW Mapper is a program very similar to XPatter or Joy2Key and the fact that it emulates a keyboard and mouse on your Xbox controller. So it basically allows you to use your Xbox controller to send signals to your computer as if it were a keyboard and mouse. You can get it on GitHub and I'll include the link for you to download it. You can get it here. It's free. Uh, you can use XPatter or Joy2Key if you want but WoW Mapper is free and it was built and designed specifically to go with the add-on that we're going to be using. The add-on in question is called console port. So you're going to go to your curse client or you're going to go to your curse.com and you're going to go to get more add-ons and you're going to type in console port. And that will pop up console port right here. You will install it and it will go into your add-ons folder. So once you have installed console port into your add-ons folder and you have downloaded WoW Mapper, you are golden to go ahead and open your World of Warcraft. So I have already made this mage. We have not logged into it yet. So we're going to go into add-ons and we're going to scroll down to console port. You see console port right here. The base one is turned on. For getting started, if you've never used it before, I recommend turning action bar and keyboard off, just just for the time being. They're both fantastic modules, they're awesome, but for the time being, we're just going to focus on console port and console port UI, because they are the two basic ones that make this add-on work. So once we have that, we're going to go ahead and log in. The first thing you will need to know is... Wow Mapper itself actually detects what controller you're using. X input controller connected. That's Xbox controller. So it knows that I'm using an Xbox controller. If you're using a PlayStation controller or a Steam controller, it would know. That being said, it takes that information and it sends it through to console port and it has recommended settings for my controller based on what I'm using. So it's going to open that up and you will you'll, you'll want to go ahead and click uh, save settings. But me personally, I have my own uh, profile made. Ignore all of these. I have one profile that I use. The rest of these I need to delete. So I'm going to import that and it changes like one or two things. That's it. Because the default settings are almost perfect for me. That's what I've been using since I started this. That's what I'm used to. I just had to change a couple things. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to controls and the thing that sets console port apart from using other uh, controller oriented gameplay is it has a hide mouse cursor when feature. So I have my set to when I start to move. I make it set my uh, or hide my mouse cursor because if I need a really quick way to hide my mouse cursor so I can use a camera look, I just like let off of my left thumbstick and then bump it again and that locks my mouse cursor. And I don't like it locking my mouse cursor when I change targets, so I turn that off. And that's all I change. I click save settings and now we're ready to go. So I'll go ahead and go over the UI. If you open your game menu, you're, you're uh, like literally pressing escape, it changes the entire game menu. Like pressing escape it opens that up and that's the that's the UI part and you can easily tab between all of these using your d-pad switch over here to social all that stuff so that's that and then you can open this and this is your new quest interface you have Y for goodbye A for accept the quest B for inspect which if you press that you can inspect the item that you're going to be receiving if you have multiple choices you can tab between them using your d-pad and you can use left trigger to compare it with what item you already have on. And then you have X for next. That allows you to tab through the quest uh, the quest text. 
So we are going to go ahead and accept that. Now you can see down at the bottom that I have all of those bindings set up. And I only have one spell for right now. That's Frostbolt, and it's bound to X. So I will go to this guy, and then uh, my left trigger, my left trigger and A is bound to target scan. That means I can scan which target is directly in front of me, and I can target which one based on which one is closest to me in front. So that's how I do my targeting. So I can easily target whichever one I want just by tab targeting. And now I press X and I start casting Frostbolt. And that's that. I mean, that's three Frostbolts, three killing, like a killing blow. Same thing here. And you don't have to worry about any of this other uh, add on stuff popping up. I haven't really configured any of it. That's just uh, kind of different add ons that I use for my, for my gameplay. They have nothing to do with console for it. So, that's the bare minimum of like how to get started with it. If you want, you can go into your controls and go over to your bindings. And you can click right here. And it'll show you all of your buttons that you have. And if you mouse over it, it'll show you what is bound to where. Like, you can see B is bound to action button 3. That's my number 3 key. Like, if you use using a, a keyboard, that would be number 3. Left trigger plus B is action button 8. That's uh, 2 to the left of Arcane Torrent, where it is right now. Obviously, you can see down there. Uh, right trigger and B is bottom left action button 3. What I'll show you that is if you go into interface, and you turn on your uh, extra action bars, that's where all of that stuff is already bound. Like, right trigger and B is my number 3 key, but above the number 3. Just easy stuff like that. And the only thing that I have changed is a couple of bindings to the far right and my number 5 key. I've changed that from right bumper to right trigger and A because right trigger and A wasn't a key binding that I was using. And it suited me better as number 5. So, that being said, if you did want to go and change something, like say I have A, A is bound to jump. I can go and click that and it will take me to A and from here, I can choose this, and I can go choose any of these, uh, like action bar, add-ons, camera. Like I can have it set to zoom in, and it can be zoom in or zoom out or anything like that. Like you can take these buttons and bind them to almost anything that you can do in the game. It's super intuitive. Like you can change this however you want. The only thing is, it looks daunting at first, but once you get used to it, it's it's very smart. So. That being said, my A is still jump, so I will still jump whenever I use A. And then I will go ahead and camp, and I'll hop over to my other character and show you what it's like once everything comes together. Now, obviously, a lot of this stuff that I'm showing you is the very bare minimum. Like, there's a lot more stuff that you can do, a lot more features that you can play with, but they're more in depth, like tuning it to how exactly you want it to play. So I'm going to go to my Paladin, who is my main. And we are in Suramar City. So I'm going to go over here. And we're going to go up to this Etten guy, and I'm going to show you how I do my combat. I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to do left trigger and A to target him. And then as a rep value I open with Blade of Wrath and then I get my first proc. And then I have my max holy power so I will begin spending my holy power and building and spinning. Doing that little vicious cycle. All the while I'm dodging his smashes just by simply moving. Now, like I said, with the go up to the controls, with the hide mouse cursor win, I have it set to a hide mouse cursor whenever I'm starting to move. So if I wanted to loot, I could press my right my right thumbstick, press my right thumbstick to bring up my cursor, and now I can hover over him and press right thumbstick again to loot. Where the fuck is his body? 
Way over there? What the hell is this? Right? Okay. And press right thumbstick again to loot. And then as soon as it's done looting, or until I move, the cursor stays up. And then I move, and it hides it. And then I can continue using my right thumbstick as a camera. And while I'm running, I can bring this up and target whatever I want. But until I lock the cursor again, I can't move my camera. But once I move the camera, I got it just fine. Now, a lot of this stuff is like getting used to it and familiarizing yourself with how it's set up. On all of my characters, I have X set to my main spammable or my builder. In this case, it's Crusader Strike slash Zeal. On my Shaman, it's Boulder Fist because nobody uses Rock Biter. It's bad. Uh, on my Death Knight, it's uh, Frost Strike because it's really the only thing that fits there. Like On my Warrior, it would be Bloodthirst. Um, on my uh, Warlock, it would be Incinerate because it's my main spammable. Uh, and then I have... Y as my main spender. On this character, it's Templar's Verdict. On my Shaman, it would be Stormstrike. Death Knight, it would be Obliterate. Warrior, it would be Raging Blow. Not really a spender in that case, but it's like the one that fits there in that one. Uh, on my Warlock, it would be Chaos Bolt. Stuff like that. Uh, B is my Conditional slash uh, Situational. On this character is my Blade of Justice, which I will always use on opening, and then every now and then, because I have Blade of Wrath, my auto attack could reset it, and then it would be a conditional cooldown reset. You know, on my Shaman, it's Lava Lash, because it's conditional, you don't always use it, you only use it whenever there's nothing else to do. On my Death Knight, it's Howling Blast, because it's my opener, slash, you know, if a Rhyme proc hits, conditional. On my Warrior, it's Furious Slash. On my Warlock, it would be Conflagrate, stuff like that. And once you get all this kind of familiarized, you know what type of abilities you want to put where. Like, I always put my interrupts on left trigger and X. So no matter what character I'm on, if I need to interrupt something, I know it's on left trigger X. My cooldowns are always on left trigger and Y. If I'm going into a big burst phase, I hit LT Y. That's where my cooldowns are. My main movement speed is left trigger B. Like, Ghost Wolf on my Shaman, left trigger B. Steed on my uh, Paladin, left trigger B. Stuff like that. I know where my heals always are. I know where my potions are. All that stuff. And I use the same format across all of my characters. So, whenever I'm going into a new character, I know, like, this ability goes here. And I know whenever I'm trying to play it, this is what I hit, right? So a lot of people, like, whenever I made my Nathender kill, people were like saying, well, this this is all fine and dandy if you don't have to do any target swapping. But if you have to do any target swapping, then good luck. That's like an actual quote that someone said to me. But that's not even a, that's not even a big deal. Like, you can see, like, all these cats down here. All I have to do is just like, okay, well, I can't target those because they're not killable. But I can't kill this guy. Looks like I'm gonna have to. Try to kill him quick. That was not intentional. But yeah, okay, so you see, Stillwater Snapper, I can I can tab to him. Or I can tab to that guy over there because Blizzard tab targeting, right? Basilisk. These different mobs over here, I can tab between them. And to prove this, I done a Notharia's Lair plus 8, and I done just fine. Like, if you couldn't have seen my bars, you really would have had no idea that I was even using an Xbox controller while I was playing, because it was kind of that seamless. Like, it was going that well. All it is is, like, getting set down and getting used to it. Like, target swapping is fine, tanking is fine, DPS is fine, healing... You can heal with this. Like, I can't heal with it because of my condition. But anyone that like gets sit down and uses it can heal with this. And the way you do that is my right trigger and start is bound to the virtual cursor. You can see it popped up on my unit frame. With that, I can use my D-pad to tab between all the unit frames available to me. Right now, my unit frame is the only one available. So I won't tab to any others. And then I can hit my heal. And it will cast it. 
it'll cast whatever spell at whoever the virtual cursor is targeting in the unit frame. It's kind of like a mouse over type thing. So if I was in a party of five, I could be able to tab down through the rest of my party and cast my heals. And in between the time that it takes to cast the heal, I could be tabbing to other people that might need one coming up. And I could cast, you know, like the heal of them. I could cast a blessing of protection or lay on hands or anything like that. Or anything if I was uh, another healer or anything like that. In fact, there is actually a person in my Discord that does Mythic Raiding, and he heals with console port. So it can actually be healed with very competitively, as well as DPS and tanking as well. Like, I have uh, a 99th percentile parse on Mythic Ursoc for my item level. I'm, it was like a 480-something thousand DPS at my item level, which was a 99th percentile. And it was it's super competitive, right? I was doing it with an Xbox controller, right? Like... It's, it's just getting sit down and getting past, like, wow, this is a lot of information. Like, once you get past that and you get practice with it, it's super easy to use. So, anyways, to answer the big elephant in the room, why do you play with this? Well, a lot of people find it more comfortable or more relaxing to sit back in their chair and play casually with a controller. A lot of people like playing with a controller better. Me, personally... I went through an injury, I broke my neck, and I lost a lot of feeling from my neck down. That being said, my hands are very numb and stiff, and I absolutely cannot play with a keyboard. Like, I cannot do anything competitive with a keyboard. But being able to play with the familiarity and simplicity of a controller, all I have to rely on is... Fuck, man. Really? Alright, you're fucked, dude. Just die. Yeah, yeah. So, whatever, all I have to do is rely on the ease and simplicity of a controller and the muscle memory of knowing where these buttons are. Because I've played with a controller my entire life. My, like, my first console was like when I was 5, 6 years old. I got a Nintendo 64. And from the time that I was 5, 6 years old, I was used to having a controller in my hand. Of course, a Nintendo 64 controller is a far cry away from an Xbox controller, but... Throughout the years, I adapted and got used to having a controller in my hand. That's why it's so easy for me to pick up a controller and play with. Like for anyone else, all it takes is just a little bit of effort to sit down and learn where everything is. And once you do it, I promise you, you'll get good at it. And you might even have a little bit of fun in the process. So this is definitely something worth checking out, guys. If you want to play with a controller just for fun, or if you have a condition that makes it hard to play with a keyboard or anything like that, or if, even if you know anyone that thinks that they can't play World of Warcraft because you have to be good with a keyboard and mouse. This might be for them. Like, you could light someone's day up by telling them that they could play World of Warcraft with an Xbox controller. Like, the first time I found this after my injury, I actually almost cried because this game has been such a huge part of my life that whenever... I found out that I could actually play it again, and I wasn't going to have to go the rest of my life without playing it. It just made me that happy. So, anyways guys, I really hope this helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, and I will do my best to answer them. And, I hope you guys get into this and enjoy it. But for now, that's the basic tutorial guide on how to use console port to play World of Warcraft with an Xbox controller. See y'all later.